Hey guys, so this video is about partial fraction decomposition. Uh, the only place I can think this comes up is in Calc 2, you use it for an integration technique. Um, I'm going to start by going um, much the same way that factoring and multiplying are kind of reverse operations. What we're going to do here is a reverse operation, is something we learned back in 85, or 95, sorry, 95 or 98. Um, so I'm going to do one of these just to kind of remind you of what they look like going the one direction to hopefully get you to see what, what it is we're trying to do. So if I have an irrational, uh, rational expression and I'm trying to add it, what I need to do is get a common denominator. So I'm going to multiply this side by the x minus ones, and this side by the x plus ones, or x plus twos, sorry. And so then that's going to look like uh, 2 x plus 2 plus 3x minus 1, all over this common denominator now of x plus 2x minus 1. And then I uh, distribute and collect terms. So that'll be 2x plus 4 plus 3x minus 3. I'm just going to write LCD here for the sake of time. And then 2x and 3x makes 5x. And 4 minus 3 makes uh, plus 1 right there. That's x plus 2, x minus 1. And so what we're doing in this section is we're given this, and we're going to try to take it back to here. Um, and so if you <laughs> thought it was bad this way, um, these definitely get a little bit involved. Uh, we're going to have two different methods for approaching it. And so I'll show what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this example, um, which is a fairly friendly one, and then do both methods with the same example so you can kind of compare them side by side. So um, here we are. So this is the same thing I got um, back here. So I should get this answer. And so what we're going to do is we're going to set this up saying, you know, if I have this, I had some fraction that had to have had this denominator, um, x minus 1. And I had some other fraction that had to have had this denominator. And then up top, because I know I'm multiplying by an x, um, because to get the common denominator, I'd have to do x and x. That means this top, for it to be linear, um, these have to be constants. And so we're going to see that when we kind of formalize this, that the degree of the numerator um, is always going to be one less than the degree of the denominator when we're adding these things. Um, and so since this is a constant, it just, sorry, since this is a linear equation, it just gets the constants uh, a and b. And more on that to come. There's a whole big box of stuff for that. So then once we do that, uh, what we're going to do is bring my notes over. Okay, so once we do that, then um, we're going to multiply both sides by the LCD. And so that's going to look like, over here I'm just going to write LCD for the sake of space. And then over on this side, it's going to be X minus 1 x plus 2. And this is our first method, but um, this step is the same for either method, so when I pick up the other one, um, I'll pick up here. So here the LCD would just cancel all of this and I get the 5x plus 1. On this side the x plus 1's cancel, so I get a times x plus 2 plus b times, and then those would cancel, so the x minus 1, so they each get the other one basically. And then um, from here, I can go a few different directions. Um, and so for method one, what we want to do is we want to use the zeros, the things that would make the denominator undefined. We're going to plug those in and evaluate. And you'll see how once, let me do it, and then you're going to see why that was actually a good plan. So I'm going to let, um, first I'll let x equal 1, and that's going to, because that's this one, 0. So that'll be 5 times 1 plus 1 and then 1 plus 2 right there. And so that's why you want to do it, is because it knocks out one of the variables, because that got multiplied up. And so that's going to leave me a single variable problem, and I can actually solve that. So 5 and 1 will make 6. This will be 1 plus 2, so that would be a 3a. And then 1 minus 1, 0b, so that term drops out. So now I know that a equals 2.
and that's this piece back up here, that's that constant. Now use the other zero, x equals negative two, so I'll be five, negative two, plus one, and then a negative two plus two. So we could just not write that piece, but just for me to show it. So this would be negative 10 plus one is negative nine. And then this would be a times zero, so that drops out. So that's equals um, minus two minus one would be minus three b. And then um, dividing the three over, I get b equals three. So then my answer, um, the, decom the decomposition of the fractions, is going to be um, a is 2, so that's over the x minus 1 term, and then b is 3, so that's over the x plus 2 term. So it wouldn't matter which order I wrote these in, it just meant like if I had switched these, then my a would have been b and vice versa, but I would have gotten the same expression at the end, so the order does not matter. Um, and so just kind of going back to this one, just to remind you that's where we started, and so that's where we've gotten to here at the end. So that's our first method. And this method is good when there are lots of zeros. So if you have most of the zeros you'd need, so say you have three constants, um, or three very three letters that you have to find, and um, there are you know two zeros, then this is a good method. So if you most if you have most of them, this is the way to go. So method two works better if you don't have any of the zeros or not very many of the zeros. And the first step is the same. So I would set this up exactly the same, a x minus one, and then plus b x plus two. And then I would clear the fractions the same way, and I'll just get that written out right up here. So five x plus one, and I'm gonna grab the, so this is um, a x minus one, and then b x plus two. So then in this method, um, in the first method, I left it like that because it was nice because I could see these things would zero out. But in this method, I want to distribute. So that's where they change. Um, so this will be 5x plus 1 equals ax minus a plus bx plus 2b. And then I want to group up my x's and my constants. So that's going to look like 5x plus 1 important not to lose that side of the equation, um, ax plus bx, and then minus a plus 2b. So then what I'll do is um, I'm going to factor out an x here, and I'll show you, it'll make more sense once I do it. So this is going to equal, um, so I'm factoring the x, but I'm going to write it as a plus b times x. And then, um, so I'm writing the x second. And then this is going to be plus a plus 2b. And um, so what we do then is we match up the two sides of this equation. So the 5x goes with the a plus bx. So these are both the the x terms, the linear terms. So what that means is the five has to equal that a plus b. So then I can go a plus b equals five. <coughs> and then the one, so it has to equal the plus all that stuff. And we could think of this as x to the zero, x to the zero. So we're just saying the five goes with the x coefficients, and then the one goes with the um, x to the zero coefficients. Uh, and so this would just look like negative a plus two b equals one. And so that's why this is in this section is there's our, our little system of equations that pops out. This one comes out pretty nice. The a's are all ready to cancel, so I'll just go three b equals six. And so that means that b equals uh, two. Once I know b equals 2, I can toss it back into either equation. First one looks easy. So moving that over, I get a equals 3. And so that's the same thing I got in the last one. So we'd have the 3 over the x minus 1, 
and the two over the B for or the X plus two. Um, so that's the second method. So like I said, if you don't have too many zeros or you don't have any zeros, um, this one's better. If you have the zeros, um, the other one is the easier way to go.